Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, coast to coast, This Week in America. Vincent Hollow's bio describes him as an astral poet and interstellar storyteller living aboard the space vessel Aquarius, shooting from star system to star system. Vincent spends his time gazing out into the universal abyss and the depths of himself, where he hopes to find his place in the cosmos through the words he weaves in the fabric of space-time. A poetic poltergeist rearranging his hauntings and nightmares into tales of verse and prose, intertwining astronomy, cosmology, and romantic prose in his exploration of grief. In Swan Songs of Sickness, The Weight of Black Holes, an astronaut travels to the depths of the universe to find his lost loved one. Vincent is also the author of the highly praised Ghost and Other Vital Organs, an obituary of Echoes. Vincent Hollow, author of Swan Songs of Sickness, the Weight of Black Holes, by the way, recipient of the prestigious Plume Award for Literary Excellence, Vincent, our guest on This Week in America. Vincent, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Hey, Rick. It's great to uh, be on the show. You are such an entertaining author, and I'm really looking forward to uh, having you on to talk about the books. We'll focus specifically on Swan Songs of Cygnus, but uh, get in the other book as well. Receiving both books, rave reviews. The title, Swan Songs of Sickness, The Weight of Black Holes. Where did the title come from? How did you come up with that? Well, um, the whole thing, uh, I knew I wanted to center around a black hole because it's just pretty much the most mysterious and yes. darkest thing that we, that we know of in the universe. I mean, the universe is huge, and we've only begun to tap into it, so uh, we don't know what else is out there, but as far as we know, it's, uh, it's black holes. And Cygnus is the constellation of the swan, which has, um, which is the location of the black hole in the book. And swan songs, as uh, some people may, may or may not know, uh, according to mythology, when swans die, they sing their most beautiful song because. Um, they are silent for most of their lives, and it's only when they die that they sing. So a swan song is what someone does, whether it be, um, you know, most people say like artist or actor or yes. writer. Uh, it's usually the last thing they do uh, before retirement. But in this case, uh, the swan song is what the astronaut, this is his mission. This is the last thing he does before he dies. So the swans, and of course, swan songs, Cygnus is the swan. So it's really like kind of a play on words there. Yes, it, and it captures your attention as you're reading that or as you're glancing at book covers. It, uh, the both books are, are, have excellent book covers, and I love the title, Swan Songs of Cygnus, The Weight of Black Holes, the book we're talking about by Vincent Hollow. How difficult is it ju to get just the right, that's sort of like a calling card, the title that's so important and people sometimes don't spend enough time working on the title. Were there other ideas you kicked around? Um, I... Uh, when I first uh, printed the book, not not really published, but printed, I had about uh, I want to say about 300 copies just printed of uh, the initial pressing, which is uh, a lot shorter and def definitely a little bit uh, different than the one that's printed right now. Um, it was initially just called "The Weight of Black Holes: uh, Swan Song for the Astronaut," and I was like. I, kind of, I like the weight of black holes. I, I like that. And I had a piece written in it that was kind of like, um, you know, the, ti the title piece. Um, but I wasn't really a fan of Swan Song for the Astronaut. So I just kind of like played around with it. I was like, well, it's, he's going to Cygnus. So I should probably tie in Cygnus. And Cygnus, again, is, is Greek for swan. So I was like, Swan Songs of Cygnus, aha. So I just kind of do a little swap there, yes. and uh, it flows a lot better now. 
Well, it does. And you nailed it. Swan Songs of Cygnus. That's C-Y-G-N-U-S, The Weight of Black Holes by Vincent Howell. You'll find the book at writersrepublic.com, other places as well. And we'll have a link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Let's talk about the style you use, the format, poetry narrative, as opposed to just a a collection of poems. How did you decide on, on the presentation? Uh, well, when it first started out, it really wasn't meant to be uh, a book, really. Um, I was just kind of, you know, scrawling space-themed prose on on notebook paper. There was really no plan for it or anything like that. It was just kind of like I was sitting and just just scrawling things that uh, personified, uh, you know, the planets. I was. It was mostly just the planets at that point, you know. Neptune, Jupiter, and all that. Yes. And then I was just kind of looking it over, and sometimes things just happen subconsciously, and you don't notice until you look over it again. And I and I looked over, and I'm just like, there's there's a story happening here, and I just kind of like tweak tweaked till I was rearranged the planets into their, you know, correct planetary orbit, so to speak. And I was like, okay, I can see I can see a plot happening here. And so I just kept writing more and more and plot began to further develop. And I was like, okay, okay. There should, what if there's a guy and he's going somewhere? How about a black hole? He goes there. Why is he going there? Uh, and, you know, I've always had a thing with ghosts and spooky things, you know, I love Halloween. <laughs> so I was like, so I was like, what if he's looking for a ghost? I'm like, well, what kind of ghost would be the ghost? of someone he lost aha and there there it was <laughs> well it's such a creative approach that you you've taken with this and i'm fascinated by the writing process what do you go through is there anything in particular that sort of gets you in the right emotional state to write the way that you do well i don't know how like um it really started but i i started listening to a lot of synth waves um and i guess it's like uh, the the music of the future i mean not necessarily this future but like you know you see a lot of uh you know 80s sci-fi with like blade runner and yes. stuff like that yes. and you know you got a lot of synth wave soundtracks and you know i just i i must have stumbled across a a synth wave playlist and it just it was playing and i was kind of digging the vibe of it and I got, I got into like a space mindset and a lot of the space themes started flowing and I started watching a lot more, um, you know, uh, astronomy and space documentaries and, and stuff like that on YouTube because, uh, I can watch a video about the stuff cause it's a little more engaging. Um, but I, I could never read, you know, a textbook on it because I've just, you know, all the technical stuff I would just get lost in. I just, uh, you know, half of the stuff I don't even need to really know. So uh, most of it was just kind of like the basic information. So, because I didn't want the book to read like a textbook. You know, it's it's a love story. It's poetry. It's it's really an astronaut singing these songs, which, you know, songs are, are really poetry. So um, I really wanted to encompass the feeling of space, but also not get too caught up in the technical stuff because, again, it's a love story. Well, and you do just sort of that right balance. And I want to talk about how you achieve that balance. So often people spend a lot of time on research and think I have to use all of that. And it's difficult because sometimes you read a book and all of a sudden it becomes a textbook. It's like, uh, you know, whatever astronomy 101 and you lose fact of, uh, of the great storyline that you've got going there. How difficult was that you to find that right for you to find that right balance that, okay, I want to make this authentic, but I'm not doing a documentary. Well, I had a, well, I took a lot of notes. Uh, I would just, you know, I would have, uh, you know, a stream, a stream of videos playing. Um, if there was a certain topic I was, I would, I needed more information on, like, um, when I was doing the, uh, the planets, I wanted to do little pieces about, uh, the moons and not necessarily all the moons because Jupiter's got over 70 moons and I'm not writing 70 pieces on each moon. <laughs> and most of them wouldn't even be very interesting anyway. So 
I kind of said I, I picked two, uh, two of them that I figured would have the most significance to the story, not and you know not necessarily be like, oh wow, this fantastic moon. So you know when I picked Io and uh, Europa, you know they're very they're very opposite because Europa is, you know, covered in ice and has the potential for life, whereas Io is very volcanic and not very suitable for life. So very polar opposites. And I was, and I thought those tied in pretty well, you know, with how the story was going. Vincent Hollow is our guest, uh, writersrepublic.com, a place you'll find the book, Amazon and uh, uh, dot com and other places as well. Sorry to me to cut off the explanation because it, it's fascinating how you, how you get just that right blend. So you're telling the story, giving us background and giving us a, a look around. It's, it's visual as you're writing it. So that that's, that's a challenging part, I would assume, to get that that right blend. Yeah, uh, because you know, I would I would have like a whole page of notes. You know, I would just write down. I would write down everything. You know, every little detail. You know, because it's kind of like a a just in case. You know, I don't want to have, you know, a little bit and then realize like, mm, you know, I could have had, I could have had that little bit of information. Yeah, you know, I I'll have like a whole page or like a page and a half of of notes that I think could work and then i'll just start kind of like writing like a like a rough sketch of what of what i want and i'll just kind of like pick facts here and there of ways that i think that'll tie in and i won't use them like exactly as they are like i won't use like exact temperatures or things like that but if there's a cool thing about it that i can kind of twist a little bit like venus is the hottest planet but if i say you know the exact temperature of the planet being like almost 900 degrees, it doesn't sound very poetic, but if you say something just like it melts, it's hot enough to melt lead and Uh, your love will melt my bones. And I'm like, aha, there we go. We can tie that in there. So people like, well, Venus is very hot and his, his, his love for her is as hot as the temperature of Venus. Ah, see, behind so the mind. It's got a little things like that. Well, yes, Vincent Hollow is our guest on the program. Inside the mind of Vincent as he puts these uh, these classic books together. This one, Swan Songs of Sickness, uh, The Weight of Black Holes. This is such a, a gripping story, and there are a number of levels to the story, a number of, of lessons possibly. Is it, it makes you think as, as we're reading this book. Talk about what you hope the reader takes away after reading this. It's more than just a good story. There's a lot to think about. Um, well, the, most mostly the book, I mean, aside from being a love story, the story has a lot to do with, um, it's kind of a personal thing with uh, my struggles with mental illness, mainly uh, depression and anxiety. And space, deep space, is the perfect, at least in my opinion, uh, analogy for that mental illness, because it's, it's dark, it's mysterious, you know, little about it. It's, it's endless, seemingly endless. You see, you know, no signs of life or light for, you know, light years at a time. You don't know which way you're pointing most of the time. I mean, if you're not in a spaceship, that is, but, you know, there's always like that, you know, the glimmer of light, like you you travel for long enough and you think like, this is hopeless. This nothing good can possibly come of this, but then you see like a a speck of light of a star or a distant planet. And, and all of a sudden you're like, you know, I can get through this. You know, if I made it this far, I can make it to that point of light over there. And that's, that's kind of what I, what I hope like people like, and it's not just like people who are in the same position as me, but people who maybe know um, someone who has some uh, uh, yes. struggles with mental illness that they can be like, Oh, I kind of get it now. And I don't expect them to like a hundred percent, you know, understand it by the time, you know, they finish reading it, but they kind of, they'll kind of like get a little grip of it and be like, okay, Okay, so this is kind of what they they think a little bit when they're going through this, and maybe I can kind of 
lean into it a little bit. Give some understanding, a little bit of context to somebody that has a loved one, a friend that's going through some situations. The book is Swan Songs of Cygnus, C-Y-G-N-U-S, The Weight of Black Holes by Vincent Hollow, our guest on the program. You'll find it at writersrepublic.com, Amazon, the usual places. Uh, go to our website. You can link on directly. With the book, how long did it take to write this book? And was it a difficult process to, to put this together for you? Uh, well, it first started about three years ago when I was just, again, doing those little planetary planetary poems. And then it started it started forming and the plot started happening. And then I was like, okay, well, I want this to look, I want this to be a poetry book, obviously, but I don't want it to look like a normal poetry book because poetry books, as, as you, as you may or may not know, are just stanzas on a white page. Yes. Yes. And most, most modern ones, you know, um, the author will do their own, uh, their own sketches. Uh, Rupi uh, Kaur um, does does their own sketches in their books. Um, some include photographs that they either have have someone else take or they take themselves. Uh, I know Atticus does it, um, but I I wanted something that was really going to take you on this journey. I didn't want you to just open the book, see some words on the page and then just turn the page and then just do it and be like, oh, well, that was a fun read. And then just kind of like forget about it. It would just kind of like fade away into nothing. So I just, I wanted to give the impression that you're on a ship. Well, how do I make it look like that you're on a ship? So I decided to make each page look like the computer screen of the ship like a, like a space console. Oh yes. Yes. So there's, so they got dials, got dials on the side and little indicators that show you really where you are in the book. It's kind of like a visual bookmark, I guess. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty thick. So, I mean, I would still suggest a bookmark, but there are little uh, like chapter indicators on the side because the book is split into five chapters and each of those chapters has its little sub chapters. So like you got the first chapter, which is the inner planets. And then that chapter is divided into the planets because we're essentially following his flight path through the solar system to the black hole. So, you know, you start, you start at the launch, you're traveling, you're doing a loop around Venus, you're going back past earth, and he's seeing it for the last time. And then you go to Mars, the asteroid belt, Jupiter, so on and so on. And so you're basically, you know, as he's flying by these things, you're seeing them. And there's also, you know, the graphic illustrations that show the planets, you know, as, as you would see them, you know, as, as if you were flying by and, you know, they're showing up in the viewfinder. And you're like, and you're like oh, we've made it here now. Okay, and then you keep on going, and you make it to the nebulas, and and you see and you see those through the screen. You know, like this is this is what the astronaut would be saying, and so it kind of, it, I want I wanted it to stick a little more, so that so that like you you want to you know keep flipping through the pages as opposed to just be like all right, well on to the next one, you know, kind of like that. And you've got such and a so visual was, aspect. What would you like to see the future for this book? I. I as you're describing that, it's like there is a very real visual quality. Do you see this as being come, becoming a film of any kind? Um, I would not mind seeing this film. <laughs> not, uh, not gonna, not gonna lie. Uh, yes. I mean, I would obviously like to see it done well. Um, a film or a miniseries, um, because there's only so much you can do with it. You know, it's a very, it's a one way street. You know, guys. The guy's uh, lover passed away, and he is determined to find her ghost in, in where he believes is, you know, the black hole. So he's going on this mission, and he knows that he's probably not going to make it. 
And everyone is telling him, you're probably not going to make it, but he really doesn't care because he wants to do this. And it's kind of like his, his, you know, his undying love for her. You know, he's, he's dedicated to this mission. And if he dies, he dies, you know, he'll be, he'll be with her like in that sense. But if she is in there and he was right, then it wasn't wasted. So I, I would, you know, again, it's like if, if it's, if it's done, um, you know, the way I envisioned it, Yes. you know, uh, definitely uh, a miniseries would be cool. A film would be even cooler. Um, but, but again, you know, you know, it's, it's how you would turn, like, again, it's, it's just a poetry book that's a one-way trip that's basically just two characters, you know, the astronaut and the AI that was implanted in him, just going back and forth. So it's pretty much, you know, just uh, if, if anyone was watching it, it would just look like a guy talking to himself, <laughs> um, which, which it kind of is. But, you know, um, there, there's you know, some flashback dialogue where, you know, he's, I uh, know that would be, you good. know, rec- recalling, recalling, uh, discuss, um, talking with, with his, uh, his dead lover, you know, so there would be kind of those tossed in there, but, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see, see how it would be, uh, how it would be pulled off. Well, a lot of creative uh, possibilities with that for now, you've got the book Swan songs of Cygnus, the way to black holes by Vincent hollow, our guest on the program couple minutes left. Were there any special uh, influences, big influences on, 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 I'll say you personally, uh, and in writing the book, any influences there that, uh, that helped you with, uh, and gave you a little bit of inspiration as you were writing Swan Songs of Cygnus? Uh, well, again, uh, the book is, aside from a love story, uh, being with my struggles and mental illness. So I took a lot of like my experiences and things that I've gone through uh, dealing with that uh, into that, into the book. So, so people would, you know, further grasp on that concept and kind of uh, help with the stigma of it. Yes. But aside from that, this is swan songs. So a lot of it has to do with the music that I listen to. And I did read a lot of poetry, you know, to kind of help along with it. Um, but, you know, it was just kind of like to kind of help with words, so to speak. Because, uh, you know, I can, write a, I can write a book, but, you know, I'm not very good with words, you know, <laughs> speaking wise. So I kind of like have to draw inspiration. You know, like, oh, that's kind of a cool word, you know, kind of things like that. You know, yes. words I wouldn't normally use, you know, every day. Um, but music is definitely the biggest influence a lot of the bands that i listen to you know and they're 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 sad bands <laughs> so and this is a sad book so it kind of makes sense so um a lot of the bands i listen to are you know have a lot of sad songs and it's not that they sound sad you know a lot of them have very upbeat music but sad lyrics and i you know those are the kind of songs that i connect to you know i have a very strong and emotional connection to songs that, you know, have very deep meanings yes. and they're not just like, you know, the, you know, a pop it on the radio that tells you to feel good and party or whatever, you know, if they're, if they're, if their feelings are kind of saying that they have the same feelings that I do, you know, I can connect with that and I can be like, okay. And then that's, and that's where I wanted the book to go where people can read the book and be like, okay, the person that wrote this book has the same feelings that I do. So I can connect in that way. And people who read your books will feel the same way. Boy, the time has gone by so quickly. It's been fascinating having Vincent on the program, Vincent hollow, H O L L O W. The books, uh, the two books is first one still available. Ghost and other vital organs and obituary of echoes, uh, receives rave reviews, still doing that. And then the new one we talked about, Swan Songs of Cygnus, 
C-Y-G-N-U-S, The Weight of Black Holes. That's available at stratton-press.com, uh, the usual places as well. Recipient of the Plume Award for Literary Excellence. I'm going to take 30 seconds here at the end, Vincent. What are you working on now? You've got uh, something else you're ready to uh, ready to publish? Well, uh, my newest collection, uh, Welcome Home Little Poltergeist, uh, has <laughs> just been... Uh, sent off and that should be coming out in the next uh, couple weeks oh, fantastic. Um, and that's a haunted that's a, a little haunted house story uh which is also a uh, poetry narrative um so that one was uh real that was an unplanned one that one just kind of like came out of nowhere and all of a sudden like i got i got a book here that's amazing um, and i'm also working on a sequel to swan songs oh, fantastic. which i'm hope i'm hoping to have by um uh, Ooh, by by the summer. Fantastic, Vincent Hollow, and you can um, you know Google and stay on top of this and, and follow him. The Swan Songs is available at uh, Stratton-Press.com. Uh, you nailed it with the new one and the title again. So nice job with that. I'm looking forward to having a chance to read that and hopefully talk about it as well. This is Vincent. It's been so much fun having you on the program. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Continued success with your writing. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. It has been our pleasure. Vincent Hollow, author of Ghost and Other Vital Organs and Obituary of Echoes. And the new book we're talking about, Swan Songs of Cygnus, The Weight of Black Holes. All this information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.